Hey everyone, Derek here. This is part two of our conversation with Jen Zemke. Enjoy. Dan and Derek is an uncensored, unfiltered podcast. You can find content warnings in the episode description. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Hmm. What about you, Derek? Where are you? Where do you find yourself? Because oh, I would man. say film is such a long, <laughs> and efficient. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, which version of editing? <laughs> um, yeah. I will say when I'm writing like a screenplay, I think I have no problem writing the initial thing. It's sort of the the like outlining first and then the editing afterwards where I can really struggle. Um, the writing process is pretty bare bones and pretty fast if I have all the pieces, but having all those pieces is difficult for me to kind of, it takes a long time for me to just sit with it. And then with editing a screenplay, I often over edit. So like I get to like version 12 of a short film screenplay. And by that point, it's like one sentence has changed between version 11 and version 12. (laughs) And then I get one bad note from someone and then I'm back to version five and I'm editing off of that version. And so now it's like it's like really over tuned in a way. Um, Interesting. And so I've had to learn how to edit my screenplays less. So then when I'm filming there's more refining I can do when I'm working with an actor and then not over refine it. So then when I'm in post, I still have plenty of options to kind of cut the film because often something that you wrote sounds great. It imagines great. And when you were filming it, it was great, but in post it may, doesn't work at all and you have to lose it or re or like repurpose it. And it's like, you have to be willing, like the editing, like, you know, there's that saying of like, you make three movies, one that you write, one that you shoot, one that you edit. And like, mm. you really are just refining that idea through and through. And I think it's easy to get constipated at any point in that process on any one of those versions of the piece. Um, and I think I often get so constipated trying to fine tune it before I've made it because I can't really draw. And so I can't like really storyboard. And so I really rely on my script being like, as perfect as it can be but sometimes that locks me in to how it's going to look or be cut in post or shot and it like it kind of sometimes it doesn't work um yeah and so i've had to learn how to overwrite i've had to learn how to overshoot and i've had to learn how to cut a lot more so yeah i think Mm. definitely editing is where i struggle the most um Mm -hmm. to kind of like not overdo it um it's really easy to overdo i think especially in film with how like bones it is um to a degree totally Totally. yeah Um, yeah so are you because you said that you are putting all your skills (laughs) into one skill skill points (laughs) into one skill um Mm -hmm. are you doing would you say it's writing or directing or like the writer director combo uh, the writer-director combo, more the director combo. I had put a few too many skill points into writing, and then I was met with the with the with the realization that I am just not. Every time I write something, it, it's always for myself. It's very difficult for another person to understand, and so um, I was like, I need to start power leveling directing because um, I've kind of hit the cap of what's useful for writing I feel at the moment um, so it's been gotcha. mostly trying to get those reps in directing um, and really like recommitting to making movies which I think has been it's easy for I feel like any artist who has interest in many mediums especially like I think the efficiency like when you brought up the efficiency thing about the efficiency of mediums it's like yeah, it's like really easy to like fall in love with like a medium that is much easier to do because it is more efficient, like podcasting or like Dungeons and Dragons is even more efficient, you know, than like writing a screenplay <laughs> sometimes. Um, and so I think it's like uh, trying to not like like remind myself to to stick to it um, and not let myself get too away from it because I do. Out of all the arts I've done, it's still the only one that doesn't uh, bore me after a certain amount of time. So, mm-hmm. um, it is sort of like this this like uh, hot and cold relationship with film. But right now, it is hot off the press, and I am really oh. doubling down on it and trying to make it more manageable, so I don't burn out and then not make movies and then 
be bummed I'm not making movies. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Because, like, I don't know. If I could be satisfied by another art form, I probably would t- would have taken it at this point. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, I mean, I think that's mm-hmm. what, you know, the efficiency was saying. It was, like, you can't just c- come into film and say, like, oh, I want to tell stories and that's why I'm here. It's, like, I have to love the process of getting to the end of this. Yeah. And it's so hard yeah. sometimes. <laughs> But it's I, I would definitely say that, that that love of the process is true for a number of different art forms. Um, mm. Filmmaking is definitely one of them. Um, I'd probably say theater, for sure. Yeah. You have to, like, love the rehearsal, right? Yeah. You know, and you have to love performance night. And, you know, like, that's definitely one. Um, I think music um, falls in there pretty similarly. Mm. Um, you gotta love... You gotta love practice, um, and I, I I wonder how you feel about this, Derek. Do you feel that writing is one of those? Because I do, due to the fact that it is a. I find writing, if you start, if you do much more than poetry, is a long, term, uh, confinement with yourself, um, and so you need like the endurance for that. Yeah, I would agree with that sentiment. And I think it's, the, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go. Oh, I was just going to ask Jen, like, how quickly, wait, like, when you have your, your, your idea for, for the comic and you put it under your notes app, like you said, how quick does it come from there to finished comic? Um, okay. It's wildly different. Um, <laughs> in the notes <laughs> app, it's still like, it's basically just an idea bouncing around in my head and it can take... Mm-hmm anywhere from like oh i'm gonna do this today to like i will wait months to start to draw it (laughs) once i have started drawing then it's like a couple of hours and that's it oh that's amazing but (laughs) but in the notes app i will sit on that for just like the longest time if i can (laughs) (laughs) especially i had one that was like a bit long form and it when it when I was thinking about it, I kept turning it over, um, and just thinking about how I would finally produce it and how it would end. And mm-hmm. it took like it was like two years. I thought about this, huh. and then finally when I started drawing it, I was like, okay, I've got it. And that one took a while and it even ended differently than what I was thinking Mm -hmm. but (laughs) I think if you sit on something too long it just becomes more like intimidating to actually try and get it on paper totally yeah yeah I I yes I very much relate to that I'm also glad to hear there's another powered notes user because I use (laughs) I like write all my ideas in app and like my apple notes app or whatever and I pin the ones I'm currently working on. So I have like a stack of like whatever is interesting. And then I unpin the ones that I've either pinned for too long and I've lost any kind of like spark or connection to the idea or ones that I've decided I need to wait and revisit like in a year. Um, and then when it gets to like a certain point in the notes document, I'm like, okay, time to sit down and start working um i'm glad there's another notes user hell yeah Um, it's so useful dane what do you use for your idea note taking is it still a physical book um well i have i have a a physical book for when i write poems which i haven't used in like ten thousand years lately because i have been (laughs) I, i i've honestly just jumped from um one one novel to the next bit basically um but i was using it pretty heavily when i was doing a poetry project but that kind of fell off and i got a separate book for that the long and short of it actually is i don't i don't um keep ideas i i never really have um interesting like if i were to break out the the book um i'm sure you can picture derek the black one with all the tape on it um it's 
it's if you look through it it's actually mostly like fully put together songs um and random things that like shot lists and just like full ideas like read out um and then i would immediately transfer those like what you guys are talking about like this have this like sort of repository of ideas um i don't i don't i'm realizing as you guys are talking i don't, I don't really do that um i just will hold a, a couple of things like just in me and if i don't have them anymore then i don't have them anymore um wow and i move on um yeah like i've never like i've done it before where i'm like oh like oh that's a great idea i'll write that down and then I, that's never become a novel um that's never become anything for me really damn um yeah i, I the only thing i would say that's close is often i will write um like a like a like a like a demo track basically um like the the novel i'm getting edited right now is originally came from like two bits of short prose and like three poems that were all on the same subject and then it blew up into a whole novel um so i'll do that sometimes mm. but that's with the closest the, i get to it yeah mm? with the notes thing i'm like sometimes it's like it can be a curse also because sometimes i will write something down really short form and I go back and I can't remember what it is <laughs> and it's like yeah. taunting me <laughs> mm -hmm. like one of my notes I'm reviewing now it just says old dogs having a yarn and I'm like what is that <laughs> what was that about <laughs> oh man yeah no I wonder if I, I... <laughs> I like that 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 phrase though I do <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's having a fun a little yarn. Australian phrase you can take with you that they love to say that <laughs> having a yarn it's like, I'm just shooting the shit. Like, oh, I'm just having a yarn. Hmm. Oh. Good to know. Huh. All right. Neat. What do you, do you miss anything about the U.S.? So much. Oh, my God. Really? Really? So See, right much. Now I feel like I would miss nothing, so. Yes, that's please. what you, that's what I thought. I was like, you know, it's going to be almost a one-to-one -one translation, but I'm going to lose all the guns you know um <laughs> uh, if only uh but there's a there's a lot to miss number one there's no good mexican food here a lot of it's food i'm gonna be straight up it's no good mm. mexican food i have searched high and low for a good bagel they don't exist here really um, dang that's like a huge loss <laughs> yeah both of those are bad. Yeah, especially you've experienced the New York bagel, so. Yeah, and you, oh my gosh, you know what? When I was in Minnesota, there was this like small, tiny business, a couple, a married couple, and they made, like made to order the best fucking bagels I've ever had. And like right after I moved here, they were like, we broke up and we are not doing the bagel business anymore. And I was like, oh my God, I'm never going to have those bagels again. Oh. I would like, when I saw that breakup post, I was like, love is dead. Nothing matters. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> love wow, is that's... dead and it took the bagel with it. Yeah. Yes. And they took the bagels, but I was like, just post like how you get that nice crispy outside, like that shiny, you know, not like crunchy, but like crisp. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, and then it's like, and then it's like good and chewy on the inside. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, so no Mexican food, no bagels. That's that's tough. Those I, are two not, big I'm ones. not even. I'm not even joking. But yeah, it is tough. Yeah. No, I literally had Mexican food the other day, and I literally have. I I literally like when I went to New York, I specifically went to like, uh, oh, is it like Brooklyn Bagel or whatever, uh, to get a bagel. <laughs> Because yeah. they, they were yes. really great. There's a place here that is a fucking trap. A lot of people are like, oh, yeah, if you want a really good bagel, go here. And I was like, okay, my savior. I went to try them. I was like, these fucking suck. <laughs> oh, man. That's <laughs> the worst when everyone thinks it's, like, really good yeah. <laughs> and it's actually awful. And I don't know if it's maybe, like, my taste 
had changed because of that one, like, good shiny outside crust bagel that I loved so much. Yeah. <sighs> but I was like, dude, this is such a disappointment. One time I went to a restaurant for brunch. They had a bagel sandwich. I was like, I might be disappointed, but I have to keep trying. And it was literally like a fucking English muffin with a hole punched through it. I was going to scream. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. That's horrifying. like, you people are an insult to the world. <laughs> of baked That's, goods. Um, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. So, anyways, yeah, it's, a, it's food things. It's like I'm used to, you know, the convenience of big city late night food being open all the time in LA and uh that convenience does not it's not the same here. Oh man. No. Nope. Isn't Brisbane pretty pretty big? Brisbane, big is Brisbane is a big city, but like to put this in perspective, the population of Australia despite being the size of the states is 25 million people, which is like the size of New York itself or greater LA itself. <laughs> Right. Wow, yeah. Okay. Right, right, right. Fuck. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that would do it. Yep. And also because they have stronger labor laws, uh places are not open as late because you have to pay people more for that. Uh, so it's like, you I'm know here for that. I'm like, okay, good workers' rights, I love it, but I wish more people were here demanding the things that I want, which is like a fried chicken sandwich at two AM. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Would you ever try baking your own bagels? I don't even know if bagels are baked. <laughs> it's funny. I was just having a rage to someone about this because um, because there's no Mexican food here. I have started making my own salsa, Ooh. Um, which has turned out pretty good. And, you know, it's fun. I like cooking a lot. And then... Um, they didn't have any pickles that I liked in the grocery store. <laughs> this is another thing. And so I was like, okay, I can try pickling. I can make my own pickles to my taste. And like when the bagel, <laughs> bagel apocalypse happened and my brother was like, uh, sometimes I make, you know, homemade bagels. You should try this recipe. And I was like, thank you. But like, actually what I want is just to go be able to pick up a dozen bagels somewhere. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I probably yeah. will break down and try it, um, but I'm still I'm grieving. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. Oh, so. Because bagels curiosity. are a lot of work. Like that's yeah. a that's a labor heavy item. Yeah. They need. They have. A, there's a whole boiling process, right? Yeah. Oh, they're boiled. Yeah. They're yeah. boiled well, and then well. baked. It's like wow. it's whole. Yeah. And you gotta, you know, you do all the kneading. Like I don't have a mm -hmm. kitchen aid, you know. It's, huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So is it like, is it just like okay? England and also I will say the the colonial U.S. Let's call it. Sorry. Um, Please keep this question in mind. I had to say one more thing that I totally forgot about right now, just just now. I had a whole comic planned about how I was grieving the loss of bagels. I oh, <laughs> forgot that. I, I did not write it down anywhere, but I just remembered it during this conversation. Oh, man. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Keep going with your question, Dane. Oh, my, my question is, so, like, there are places in the world that um, the cuisine that comes out of them the, itself just isn't great. Um, I, I think England might be like the worst, um, offender in oh this. Oh my God, it's it, so bad. It, it, like English cuisine, it's bad. Um, but the, these places are then saved by the rest of the world, right? Um, yeah, hooray colonialism, I <laughs> guess. Um, <laughs> You know, like, a a and I'm wondering, is Australia one of those, I wonder? Yes, like, yes. Australia, what about, like this is what I will say about the cuisine here in Brisbane. Great Asian food. Yeah, I was going to say, sense. that makes sense. That makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And what about, and this is just, I don't know how much you would know, but, like, is there, like, traditional... 
Aboriginal food, I'm sure that's being pretty goddamn there reductive. Is. I'm gonna um, just really quick. Uh, I made the same mistake when I came here because we are just not across Australian politics in the U.S. Why would we be? Uh, apparently, mm -hmm. Aboriginal is like just a little out of date. <laughs> oh, fuck. now we say Indigenous. Oh, okay. All right. I'm so gonna it's say the... it's, I don't think it's offensive mm -hmm. to no, say that. It... I think it's just like you know, if you come across like an older person who maybe says like Oriental, but they don't mean it offensively. Yeah, yeah, or you know, depending on which tribe you're speaking yeah. to yes in the US. and this was like a trip for me because i had been to australia when i was in high school mm. and at the time it was like very common so i was working off mm. of like 10 year old knowledge when i came here okay hmm. well awesome anyways we so are now, now we better say, than we were yes. 10 minutes ago <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right now like usually i don't i i'm not like um that is so rude i'm just like i know that you don't know just that yeah I no i reference. honestly i really appreciate it it's you know in this way i don't need to be informed after you know making that mistake to yeah. a native indigenous yes. yeah. even then, <laughs> right? like, like even then i don't think like if they're like oh you're american they're not going to be like wow that was so rude of you mm -hmm. yeah but tell me about their food is it good okay. <laughs> i imagine it's good uh, it's hard for me to say because I don't know that I've ever actually had like like a full like traditional indigenous dish, but I will say that gotcha. there is influence a lot of times over like the ingredients that are Ooh. present. Okay. Um, so like finger limes is a big one. Mm. And if you Google this, it just looks like a long skinny lime, but okay. the taste oh, yeah. that pops out is like just so, it's, there's just so much, there's so much flavor in there. Mm. Um, so that finger limes awesome. is a big one. What else? Sweet potato. I'm trying to think. I'm trying. Let me. Let me. Have you guys heard of um, Awamni? It's a restaurant by the sous chef, spelled S I O U X, in Minneapolis. I have. I tried to get a reservation there, but it was very much booked yeah, for like it's three booked months. Yeah, the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have eaten there a couple of times, and I think so. Like when you go there, it's like these are the ingredients that we know we used because they are, you know, traditional, they're native to the United States, like corn. There's no beef, pork, or chicken when you go there because all of those are animals that are, they're not native to the, to North America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but the way that they're prepared a lot of times has like a very, like French feel because that's where everyone learns how to cook is like in France and Japan. And mm -hmm. so I think it's the same thing if I had to translate it is like, we know that there are ingredients, right. That would belong in like an indigenous meal if you were going to try and make one authentically, but mm -hmm. you might not necessarily know how they're used. Or at least if you do know, they're not showing up in like, a fancy restaurant. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Very. If you do get a chance to go to Omni, it's one of the best restaurants I've ever eaten at. I highly recommend it. Yeah. No. My mom and I were there on a road trip, like not too long ago, and I, I, yeah, I tried to get us a reservation there because I heard great things, but. Alas, uh, I should have known that two months in advance. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, hmm. Good to know. Good to know. Hmm. Uh, man, I'm trying to think of any. If there are any other questions, I have. I guess, Dane, if you've got questions, but also Jen, if you've got questions for us, hmm. <laughs> we we can we can do our best to answer things. <laughs> True. True, true. 
How far into law school are you, Dane? Um, I'm about to start my second year. So that's uh, two, th- that'll be two, it's three years. I don't know why I was trying to make that more complicated than, yeah. Math. Yeah, a little less than halfway done. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Just checking. How are you, <laughs> how are you finding the people that you go to school with? <sighs> um, hot and cold, I would say that. Um, I have, on the whole, met people I have quite a bit of respect for. Mm. Um, so I, as, as, um, as, uh, as I've said many times on the podcast, I went to school for music originally. Um, and as Jen, I'm sure you're aware when you're in art school, um, it attracts a certain like-minded person, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and usually that like-mindedness is not necessarily political or based on like values or morals or whatnot. Um, it's usually like a love of the art, right? Like that's the key right. thing. But typically art schools, they seem, they, they often will attract, a a more liberal or progressive, whatever you want to call, call it sort of crowd. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure there's a reason why, um, I, I don't, I don't know that reason why. Um, but that's, I think that's true of, uh, of, of basically every field, right? Like there is some underlying thing that is under underlying value, underlying interest that attracts everyone who goes into it to some greater or lesser degree, right? Like, um, and law school's no different. The underlying thing that it is though, or the number of them that it could have attracted them is just different, right? Mm. Um, so you, you'll get the people who are there for money, for sure. You get the people who are there for prestige. Um, you get the people who are on a moral crusade um, and that moral crusade, I will add, is not an exclusively one that I would actually deem as an actual positive moral. Because um, you get the people who literally have come there to put away anyone they view as a criminal. Yeah, like right? I'm going to law school to overturn Roe v. Wade. <laughs> yes, there are, the, there are absolutely those people. And there are the people who are going to law school to put it back, right? Like, mm. you get your people who are... Um, going for, for, you know, to go into politics, right? Like, and that's a much wider range than I was used to before, right? Like, everyone was there to play music, right? It, you know, you didn't really get the person who was there to, like, make a boatload of cash, <laughs> um, you know? And so who who was cared way less about what they were doing and more about how much they were going to get paid. And so I'm, like, interacting with a much wider range of, um, people that I, I, I had before. Um, and yeah, you, you, um, you get your anti Roe v. Wade people for sure. Um, and I have to find a way to work with them and, um, interact with them professionally. Um, I do not like them. Uh, (laughs) And not all of them do I respect. I, I will say that there are people who I heartily disagree with um, in my law school class um, who I do have a great deal of respect for. Um, I respect them intellectually. Um, I respect their, like, their kind of, like, moral founding. Like, I don't believe that they're just following some thought process because it's easy or because they didn't think about it. Um, and, and then there are the people who I'm like, oh, you just aren't good. (laughs) Um, like I I will say that there has been a higher level of like people who I run into. I'm like, I think you might not be great. Um, you, you concern me like this. There are people who I'm like, oh, you, you fucking worry me. I don't think you should be handed any more power. Um, And this is the place to um, where you can acquire it. Um, I I, I will say, though, um, also just 
some very wonderful people are there. Um, I think there is a good there is good reason to be hopeful too, you know. Um, hopefully that answered the question. Yeah, totally. I was gonna say thank you for answering so thoroughly because I was asking because I was like, you know, I do think that going to an art school is probably a its own experience in terms of you know the range of mm -hmm. going and being at different schools for different majors um so i was like you know how different is it <laughs> and your answer yeah that. pretty pretty wildly different um i didn't expect art school to be the more narrow band of people yeah but i think it is Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I like them a bit better pound for pound. <laughs> <I must say. laughs> yeah. Um, there are more of, um, the law people though. So I've found roughly the same number mm -hmm. of friends <laughs> though. Um, but that's just numbers. That's just a number game. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Good stuff. What's my other questions? Derek, what are you working on? Oh boy. You can say this like your day job and also like creatively, what are you working on? Yeah. So I'm still, I've been at, I, I've been working in digital media during the day for a while. Uh, I'm working on a project at my day job that I can't say too much about actually. Okay. Good That's been job. the big development. It'll Ooh. be hopefully very cool when I can talk about it and like, a month um, uh, but it is somewhere in between my goal is somewhere in between like what I enjoyed doing as a hobby and my professional goals as like a director it is somewhere in between that uh, yeah outside of that I've been uh, working on trying to get shorts made um, and that has led to one short now being uh pushed off to next year as a next year thing to figure out um just because of how big it is hmm. and uh in the interim i've been trying to write another short and just get back into the habit of writing stuff again because i haven't been mm -hmm. um all that said i'm also working on a documentary so i've been running around a lot after after my okay, day job yeah. so i've been yeah i uh there hasn't been a lot of time uh, to do other things like I only just now recently finally like two and a half months later started playing Tears of the Kingdom um, <gasps> huh. Yeah, and I've I can only... talk so much about Tears of the Kingdom. Sorry. I keep going. Oh, man. Yeah, I like just started I've already put in like 10 hours over the two days I've had in the last three weeks um, <laughs> To play it. Hmm. So I've been slowly working through it uh, but yeah, it's just, it's been like, it's one of those weird things where it never registered in my brain that I'm like doing the film thing I always wanted to do several years ago. It just never like clicked that it was, that this is what it would look like, that most of my time would be in yeah. development um, and like talking to people and pitching the project over and over and over and over again. Um, and like that like the opportunities that would arise would be strictly narrative and so it's been very interesting kind of uh just kind of uh figuring that out and nav navigating guessing that um and trying to keep the well full um at the same time but hopefully hopefully by the end of the year uh there will be some cool things that have been done but uh, end of the year is still five months away so <laughs> or four months away now <laughs> um, not to not to terrify everybody um, yeah it's August surprise yeah oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is August or you are in the future um, yeah. yeah hey we have like two hours or so of of July left we I know in the past yeah and yeah so yeah it's been it's been some good film stuff just a lot of film stuff and so i've had to it's interesting when you have to like learn how to manage the thing you really enjoy and like set hard boundaries on it so yeah because uh i'm not getting paid for most of these things so 
they're still on me to do um Mm -hmm. but it was stuff i came up with so that's on me to figure out (laughs) (laughs) um one of them i am getting paid and that one's great uh but yeah it is it is interesting so yeah uh yeah that's i guess the film update um that's a good update yeah Hopefully I'll have more soon. It's like you're tired, but you should feel proud. <laughs> yes, yeah. Like it really does feel like I've like I'm yes, it feels like I have just run a really long time and I have a lot of lactic acid in my legs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Um Okay, well, you know, we've been going for a bit. I'd say are there any final thoughts before we kind of come to an end of our time here? Um, yeah. Go to Jen's Instagram. Yes. Look at her art. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's yes, so I good. am so bad about updating my social media, but please visit. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely always a joy and commission Jen. <laughs> Hell yes. Yes, please. Yeah. And Jen, uh, we will we're still figuring out what a season four would look like but we will most definitely whatever it becomes of it be coming to you for art so thank you i am looking forward to it i love doing (laughs) your guys's covers yeah it's been really fun and Mm -hmm. i i really enjoy them too it's it's been a really nice way to mark each chapter so yeah 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 I'm glad that we finally got you on the show, too. Um, Me, too. Yeah. Um, it only took a hundred and some episodes. I know. <laughs> well, you know, there's so much to go over, so. Yeah, yeah. And and for those you wondering. a specific topic, I mean. Yes. Yeah. We will have to nice. maybe bring you back for whether it's Tears of the Kingdom or Efficiency in Art or some other thing mm-hmm. just to, like, you know get you back on the show just to dive into these topics deeper but yeah i'm glad that we made this work thank you so much oh, yeah. for joining us me too thanks for having me <laughs> okay well with that uh yeah you can go follow jen everywhere at everywhere at freshwater bear or just on instagram at freshwater bear um yeah, everywhere actually i don't think i have a twitter but okay. tumblr instagram S- Mama Nobody Reddit has too. a Twitter anymore. It's yep. X now. I never... Oh, that's right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was, like, never really active on Twitter, and I'm certainly not active on X, so... Yeah. Wait. <sighs> okay, I'll have to ask about this off mic, because I don't know what you two are referencing. Um, oh, my gosh, what? what? <laughs> Hold on, what? I don't know oh what you two are No, we should go over it right now. Yeah, right I now? cannot okay, wait going, to break yeah. the news to you. Okay, tell me the news. <laughs> So you know Elon Musk. Yeah, of course I know <laughs> I Elon know. Musk. I know you know. Yes. Uh, he bought Twitter and he's been having a shit fit for a year straight and he just rebranded Twitter as X. Just X. Not So it's Twitter. no longer Twitter. There are no Here's... tweets. It's X's and posts. Cause he, and here's a problem with that, though, which is, I believe it is... Uh, Facebook Meta that owns X. That's correct. As a as a trademark, and the uh, X uh, profile on what was formerly Twitter also does not belong to X. Um, and I believe Microsoft also has some claim to X. For the Xbox, um, for the they Xbox. own the game because. <laughs> so, I, I, if my understanding is, <sighs> he's about to get uh, sued into the ground by Microsoft, Facebook, uh, simultaneously. Huh? Have you guys seen um, Succession? I've seen the first season. I have season. not. Oh my god, it's so good! It's like Shakespearean, and it is watching see i just finished watching season four and it the timing is so perfect because the end of season three slash season four introduces this like elon musk-esque character Mm. (laughs) dang see elon musk to me is kind of like trump in the way of like it's really hard to parody him 
because he feels like a parody already. Yeah, I mean, I think Succession is like not necess- it's like less parody and more satire. It's done very well. Wow. Mm, good. Huh. Okay, cool. I'm learning so much. I I so, learned yeah. about UFOs this weekend and now I'm learning <laughs> about the Twitter rebrand to X. Uh <laughs> Oh my goodness what is yeah it's one of those is more interesting than the other really definitely yeah Yeah. this is just a fun it's just a fun extra little road bump on the the road of enchidification of social media (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. it feels like watching like a dumpster fire um where raccoons occasionally show up and throw (laughs) more trash into it where it's like i don't think this is good but like man is this funny and silly to watch that's actually a great visual image just a bunch of raccoons throwing the like social media logos into a dumpster fire um (laughs) yeah that's actually pretty great wait so man like I'm going to draw this later. Hang on, I'm writing this down. <laughs> yeah, you should. That would actually be really funny oh my God. To, to visualize because, man, I... Uh, okay. Uh, social media. I feel like this is the year. It's all... Like, everyone's going to get off of it. <laughs> you know? Or like... It feels... No. It feels or like, like to a degree, it's going to be used less by maybe our generation of folks um, i mean i i would hope so but i mean we've been doing this shit since myspace right mm-hmm. like twitter's gonna die or not even die it's just going to be this other thing and putter on for however long it's gonna putter on and then there'll be something else i'm sure yeah right like I mean, I'm not even sure exactly what counts as social media anymore. Is TikTok social media? I think so. I actually am learning about social media terms for my web dev class. Uh, Social media refers to like literally any time you get media through like someone posting it. So it, I think it even includes like Wikipedia. Yeah. Okay, so nothing isn't social media. Okay, so yeah. okay. Yeah. I guess like, okay, I mean, like but, the okay, newspaper it, is not social media. Mm. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it has to be digital, but. Yeah, I guess like in the sense of like, like I I don't know. I've been thinking about this for a while about how like, it, it, like just like, uh, especially as like an artist minimizing social media as like the as like the platform to be on and treating it just as a tool and making work that can transcend multiple tools Mm -hmm. um yeah that's like it's hard and she feels not impossible sometimes but um yeah you know like when vine died all the viners went to youtube and now they're all vloggers and then they all went to tiktok and yeah. now they're all going back to YouTube and like no one's on Facebook video and you know people are making them reels but <laughs> you know and, and now everyone's got them threads and the mastodons and them blue skies but it's like I've found that I I get more enjoyment about clicking upload on Vimeo which is like such like an it's such like a it's like a platform that I don't even think people, they don't even treat themselves as a social media platform anymore. They are a nah. strictly like end to end, like business to consumer video hosting site now. Um, mm. Same with like, I mean, not YouTube, but like YouTube has a similar vibe where you, you click upload and it's, it's a little different, but it's weird. I, yeah, you know, if now wasn't a good time to just quit Twitter period or quit like whatever period thing instagram i don't know i i still have an instagram and i think i've been like slowly filtering out everything i've posted on instagram um Hmm. and i've filtered out i don't like follow any celebrities anymore i like just follow people i know um and i kind of like that 
I don't know. That's a good call, I think. Yeah, like, social media is weird. You know, Facebook, it's only a matter of time before I, I give Facebook the old chop. <laughs> um, oh, you I know. did that years ago. Yeah. yeah. I, Jen, are you on Facebook? I use Facebook Messenger as, like, my main chat, but I do not use the Facebook homepage at all. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't. I don't even... Yeah, I can't even think the last time I used Facebook homepage. I've just been using Messenger. Um, yeah, that's so wild. Thank you both for sharing and telling me about X. <laughs> no com. If you guys You're are going to do a social welcome. media episode, I highly recommend reading some Cory Doctorow thoughts on it. This is my Cory Doctorow plug. Oh, okay. Good to All know. Right. Okay. Love that. Yeah. Well, we'll keep that in mind. <laughs> um, but yeah. Look forward to that, everyone. Yes, yep. look forward to that. And th- once again, thank you, Jen. And Hell yeah. While there is social media existing, uh, follow Jen at Freshwater Bear everywhere. <laughs> thank um, you. Yeah. While there is social media existing, just hop off of it and make podcasts with your friends instead. How about that? <laughs> yeah. That's Way a better. good call. Yeah, we endorse Way that. Way better use of time. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay. It was great talking to you guys. Nice to e-meet you. Dang. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm in a hell yeah mood. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Out here on the sand. Not far from land. Sure, I'm warm. But I wish I was cold. Oh.